I hate to burst anybody's bubble, but I have seen the future for the BYU football program. I simulated this upcoming season. What were the results? How do things look for the Cougars in the future? We're talking about that and also talking one-on-one with BYU running back LJ Martin. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen or view of the day, depending on how you're consuming this. And also a big thank you to all of you who we like to call everydayers right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This is your original daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. And today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, use the promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. All right, as I mentioned, I have seen the future for the BYU football program. The great thing about having EA Sports College Football 25 back in our lives is I can go through and simulate an entire season and tell you what BYU football is going to do this upcoming season. Now, let me also add the caveat that this is in no way an official declaration of how the season will go for BYU, but as you're about to see, I'm going to throw up some screenshots for those of you watching this on YouTube, and if you're listening to it in the audio format, I'll describe it as best I possibly can. But if you want uh, to understand how I went about this, all I did is I downloaded the game, I started a dynasty mode, uh, I created a coach that I named Yak Talk because you don't allow you to have Kalani Satake as BYU's head coach for whatever reason. I probably could have created him, but I decided to just, you know, I'm going to put myself in the game. And then I essentially, uh, I went into the first season. I didn't mess around with any of the settings. I didn't change anything at all. I said, simulate to the end of the season, and here's what we got. So I'm going to throw my first graphic here. This is how the Big 12 finished up. And uh, if you're having a hard time seeing this, apologies. I took this literally off my TV uh, screen with my phone. The Big 12 champion in 2024, according to EA Sports College Football 25, is not Utah. It is the Kansas State Wildcats with an 11-3 record and a 9-1 conference record. Second place, Texas Tech. Third place, UCF. And then Utah checking in at number four. Well, where is BYU, Jake? Don't spoil the surprise for me. Well, BYU, see that they're in 12th place with a 6-7 and seven overall record. Now, I'm not going to uh, bury the lead here. Six and seven means the BYU got to six and six and thereby played in a bowl game. Yes, they did. But the bigger point to be made here is if you look at uh, the record for BYU, it was a 500 record on the season with a six and six overall record and, and then a loss in the bowl game. We'll get to that momentarily. But if you look at the splits here for BYU, three and six in the bowl season, uh, it's not in the bowl season, in the Big 12 season, apologies meaning BYU swept their non-conference games to get to 6-6. Six and six. Now, the funny thing about the splits here also, if you look at it, 2-4 and four at home, but a 4-2 and two road mark for BYU. Incredible stuff uh, for the Cougars. So for our next graphic, this will tell you exactly how things played out for BYU. As, B, as I mentioned, BYU won all three of their season uh, opening uh, non-conference games, beating what is FCS Midwest in the game, but Southern Illinois, 45-24. to 24. Then they go to SMU and th- win 35-21. to 21. Wyoming, uh, who BYU faces in Week 3, they went up to the High Plains up there at 72-20, and Laramie won that game 31-28. to 28. So BYU squeaks out a 3-0 record to start the season. Then their Big 12 opener against the uh, champion Kansas State Wildcats. Well, they played hard, obviously, in the Big 12 opener at home, losing that game 48-42. to And you're going to notice here a little bit of a trend. BYU had a vast dichotomy of how their losses came. Then the following week, BYU went to Baylor and finished that one 35-16 winner. So out of the shoot before BYU's first bye week, they were 4-1 and on the season. Sound very familiar to last year? It should because it's a very similar record. Then... The mid-October slate arrives for BYU. Arizona comes to town. BYU learns a, loses a barn burner, 38-35. to 35. Then Oklahoma State hands BYU a 10-point loss at home, 38-28. to 28. So the Cougars still doing their thing and hanging in there, but uh, back-to-back losses dropping them to 4-3 and three on the season. Then the biggest loss of the year comes to surprise third-place uh, UCF. I'm speaking of the third-place finish in the Big 12. BYU goes to UCF, goes to Orlando, gets absolutely blown out. 42 to 21. I will not spoil this and say it's the, that it's anything. That's the worst loss of the season for BYU. Well, that sets up obviously the next bye week with BYU now sitting at four and four on the season after a four and one start. Well, how would things ultimately uh, transpire for BYU? Next graphic comes up here. That brings up the rivalry game against Utah and BYU loses a heartbreaker. 
29 to 25. In this game, I'll throw up the graphic right now, show you what the breakdown of the box score for BYU and Utah was. It was 29 to 25, and BYU actually held a 17 to 10 lead. Then going into the fourth quarter, they're down 22 to 10, and they can only muster eight points as they come up short as, as Utah tacks on a touchdown late uh, to make it 29 to 25. In this game, Cam Rising had a four touchdowns for Utah, whereas Gary Bohannon, who, by the way, is BYU starting quarterback and was the only quarterback to take snaps in this simulated season for the Cougars. He ended up with three touchdowns against one interception in that loss to Utah. Now back to the schedule here. BYU then follows that narrow loss to Utah with their uh, second to last home game against the Kansas Jayhawks and Jeff Grimes return to Provo and BYU loses a heartbreaker once again, 43 to 41 to Kansas. So therefore all of a sudden BYU is four and six on the year and oh no, are they going to be able to avoid uh, a losing back-to-back losing seasons? Can they grind out enough wins in the final two games of the year to get that six and six mark? Well, that's exactly what they do. They go to Arizona State, winning that one 38 to 24, and then finish off the campaign with a home win over the Houston Cougars 24 to 19 to cap BYU's regular season at six and six overall. Now, if you notice this, some pretty narrow losses. You lose by two to Kansas, four to Utah. 10 to Oklahoma State, and also a 3 uh, to Arizona. You look at that and say, man, what could have been in this season for BYU? And also a six-point loss to Kansas State, who ultimately ended up uh, winning the conference. BYU went from a six, could have gone from a 6-6 six and six record, and if, if you uh, take some of those one-score games out of the picture and change them into wins, what's BYU sitting at 9-3? and three? That's the thing about this, is this is a very, very interesting season uh, and kind of breaks down the way that I kind of envision how BYU is going to get to 6 and 6 in real life. Because you look at it, BYU, if you want them to be a 6 and 6 team, you're probably going to have to sweep that non conference slate. I know that there are a number of you who like to hop in my mention saying, Jake, that's unacceptable. They'll be 3 and 6 in conference. Let's realize BYU's got one of the toughest schedules in the conference this year. They're playing essentially every one of the top dogs in the league. And the fact that according to the simulation, what I believe BYU's best interest to get to six and six is, is to win uh, those non-conference slate and then grind out three conference wins. I think it'd be a mark of improvement for BYU to do that because you'd be beating an, an a, A4 school and SMU be going to Wyoming, which funny enough, uh, if you want to know about the rivalries in this game, BYU's rivals in the game, Utah, Utah State, and the aforementioned Wyoming Cowboys. Bit of a surprise to see Wyoming uh, selected, but uh, that are BYU's three rivals in this game. So as a result of this season, where does BYU play in the postseason, you're asking me? Well, let's throw that up right now. BYU got invited to play in the Las Vegas Bowl. They're home away from home down there at Legion Stadium, and they faced off against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now, as we mentioned, BYU finished the season 6-7. and seven. Somehow, they allowed Iowa to score 35 points on them in a 35-24 to 24 loss, uh, speaking of the Cougars. You want to know why I know this is a simulation and not reality? Iowa scored 35 points, folks. That does not happen in reality. Now, I know they have a new offensive coordinator. In theory, they could be better. I just don't believe it. Uh, Iowa is kind of stuck in, it feels like, the 1990s. But uh, last, BYU loses that bowl game, finishes the season 6-7. and seven. And then the other reason why I think that we know this is a simulation is I'm going to throw this up here as my final graphic. This is the national championship game in my season that I simulated. The Oregon Ducks celebrate as national champions by beating, wait for it, Wait for it, North Texas. You heard that right. The North Texas Mean Green, seemingly out of nowhere, out of the American Athletic Conference, come up and play in a national championship game and come up short to the Oregon Ducks. But Phil Knight in this alternate universe is celebrating wildly as he fulfills his life mission to lead the Oregon Ducks via all the money he's injected into that university and that football program to a national championship. So, what do you make of this? What do you think about BYU finishing the season uh, six and seven overall, playing in a bowl game, uh, also putting together a six and six overall record? Is it good enough for you? If that if that is how it plays out for BYU, getting off to a four and one start, enduring a pretty lengthy losing streak in the middle of the season, and then finishing it up with two wins over Arizona State and Houston, which by the way, in the game, if you notice, the records of the teams BYU beat not great. I think all of them a losing uh, record overall that BYU did beat in that uh, mar in that in that season. I actually know one other one. Let's see. No, Baylor, excuse me. Baylor was the only one with a winning record eight and five overall. Everybody else that BYU beat in that season had a losing record. So 
take that or leave it, but that's how things resulted in my first ever simulation. And like I said, this is the second thing I did outside of playing a game with my son. Uh, we played it, did just a play now game. I gave him the honors of being BYU. I decided to be the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. We had a little bit of a, uh, a slugfest as I ended up winning the game 14 to nothing, but uh, th- I'm rusty. I am absolutely rusty. And I mentioned to you guys yesterday on the podcast, if you guys are interested in being part of an online dynasty for the PlayStation 5, I am going to need some time to get my game tuned up. But I think come uh, the month of August, we'll get that rolling. And I've got a number of you who have reached out. If you are interested in joining an online dynasty, playing on the PlayStation 5, because uh, cross-platform play is apparently just not going to happen with this game, which is disappointing. Uh, to be frank, but if you want to be a part of it, email us locked on BYU at gmail.com. We'll put together a list as we get a little bit closer, maybe to uh, August one, and then start rolling and have some fun with an online dynasty this year. So it should be really, really cool. And I welcome your feedback. Do you think six and six in that circumstance with a bowl uh, game in Las Vegas and a loss to Iowa? Is that good enough for you? Would that indicate to you there was progress for BYU? Uh, by the way, also one other thing real quick. In terms of statistics on the year, i got to pull this up on my phone here because uh, the graphics weren't uh, rendering the right way when I bro- broke this down. BYU's rushing attack in this uh, simulated season was paltry once again. Uh, just under 1,000 yards overall as a team. BYU's leading rusher? Gary Bohannon is a dual threat quarterback, 581 yards. Miles Davis, the second leading rusher with a 215 yards and LJ Martin, who we will talk with momentarily with 189 yards. Uh, Gary Bohannon for the season passing was a big reason why BYU had any success. 3,899 yards on 71% completion percentage, 39 touchdowns against 14 uh, interceptions. Let's just put it this way. BYU was essentially an air raid team, it felt like, in many respects. And then a couple other notes for you guys. The Parker Kingston was BYU's breakout star. 966 receiving yards to go with 12 touchdowns. Chase Roberts, 840 yards to go with 11 touchdowns to be BYU's uh, one-two uh, duo at wide receiver. And then on defense, Ben Bywater, 88 total tackles on the year, five interceptions as BYU's defensive star. And then the leading sack artist on the year, is the man, the myth, the legend, Jack Kelly, with four and a half on the year. Second place on the team honors went to uh, John Nelson and Tyler Batty with three and a half tackles each. So there you go. That is the breakdown of my, my simulation of BYU's upcoming season is going to be like. And like I said, I welcome any and all feedback, whether it comes via social media. Drop us a note in the YouTube comments if you're watching this online. Uh, five-star reviews on Apple with a comment or two. Whatever you got for us, we welcome all the feedback. Once again, email us, lockedonbyu at gmail.com. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you guys make of that simulation. All right, coming up here in just a minute, as promised, we're going to catch up with LJ Martin, BYU running back. He was at a cool event yesterday, had a chance to attend, had a chance to sit down with him for a couple of minutes to talk about the upcoming season, what he expects to accomplish in a BYU uniform this fall, and also he addresses some of those rumors about his health, and we'll talk about all of it as you roll on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula of winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive, my friends. eBay Motors has everything to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance as well. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And the best part is, with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Can't be much simpler than that because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, with all the parts that you need at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Once again, that's eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And of course, eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you for being with us. Uh, if you've not done so already, I want to encourage you guys to first, uh, check out the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's also now available on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's called our friends over at Locked On Sports today. And it's here for your 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus all of our national shows covering every league as well. Find Locked On Sports today available wherever you, uh, you get your podcast. It's also available on YouTube and the free fire tv channels app on amazon fire all right let's talk about byu's rushing attack as i mentioned the stats for the simulated season for byu uh say that they're gonna have a pretty paltry uh, rushing attack kind of a throwback once again to last season 
I can tell you that as you're about to hear, LJ Martin is willing to do anything to make sure that BYU wins more games this season. Is it a one game improvement? Do they go from five and seven to six and six? Maybe so. But he was at an event yesterday with our friends over the Lofts at River's Edge. Now, if you're looking for a place to live, by the way, I had a chance to go out to the Lofts at River's Edge. Now, you're wondering where this is at. It's actually right on the land that the former uh, movies eight and Provo and all that strip mall was a shop co for a long time there. It has all been transformed. It has got a townhomes, apartments, just an incredible transformation uh, into a pretty thriving community. And I had a chance to go down there. LJ was there as a part of an NIL event, uh, courtesy of our friends at the Lofts at River's Edge. And a big thank you to Taylor, by the way, one of the head honchos with the Lofts at River's Edge for inviting me down. But I had a chance to catch up. And by the way, if you want to check it out, go uh, visit Lofts at River's Edge. It's, it's a thriving, uh, brand new community. Incredible designs that look like from what I was able to see in the very relatively short time I was there, but uh, check that out. But once again, I had a chance to catch up with LJ Martin, talk a lot about uh, what he's doing in the NIL sphere like he had with that event last night. Also talk about the upcoming season. And I, I just, I, I asked the question, how is his health? So he addresses all that and more right here on Locked on Cougars. Do you enjoy doing stuff like this out in the community? Yeah, I really enjoy doing stuff like this in the community, you know, just interacting with people and just getting to know them and allowing them to get to know me is just really fun. Now, we've talked with coaches and players about the NIL component of all this, but it, it, I think more than just the, the money factor, it's getting you out in the community and getting your name out there and just kind of getting you to know fans, I would imagine. Is that right? Yeah, it's just like being able to do little things like this, but then also like, you know, just it's like really not even about the money, you know, because I could probably go make a job and, you know, <laughs> You go work a job and then make more money, but you know it's just like taking time out of my day like this, and you know just interacting with fans, getting to know them, and you know just doing what they did for me. You know I know like college football players before me, so my uncle was a coach at New Mexico State, so like just interacting with them that made like my day all the time. So like just being able to do that for people is what I plan to do, hoping to do. Now we've talked with. Uh players like yourself over the years about the, the community aspect of this like, and what the Royal Blue Collective and what the NIL component can do in terms of building you guys up for your future careers. Obviously, a lot of you have aspirations to play in the pros, but are, do you see that element of, hey, no matter what happens down the line, I'll have, I'll have something on the back end? Yeah, you know, just the connections that they're able to build, you know, like, you know, Utah got some of the best businessmen out here. So, you know, just them being part of the collective, getting to know them and just having them as mentors and things like that. And then on top of that, just having like the people around us, you know, just great, genuine people who really want the best interest for us. What is your excitement level for the season to come? Excuse me? What's your excitement level for the season to come? My excitement? Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited, you know, like I can't wait to go out there and just play again, you know last year he kind of left a better taste in all of our mouths so I think I speak for all of us when we want to go out there and you know just make sure that we go out there and show who we are you know I feel like last year we had a pretty good start to the year and we just kind of were um, you know just kind of got complacent and really relaxed towards the end but you know this year we're kind of coming back and you know we're looking to really like cement our names out there. Big 12 Media Days, Kalani and the players that were at that kind of talked about the fact that you guys are motivated to show that last year was kind of an aberration and not the reality of what this program is all about. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I agree with him. You know, like, he's our head coach and, you know, he, know, he knows what he's doing. You know, like, you know, he said it best, you know. That's that's not a that's not a great year for us, and that's not that's something out of the normal for us. You know, the normal is going to be us going, you know, going to bowl games and you know getting wins out there and you know getting a lot more wins for us. How is your health status right now? There's been some rumors out there. Do you want to address any of that? No, I mean I'm doing great. I feel great. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, Fair. out of nowhere, <laughs> my knees came into question. I mean, uh huh. Yeah, I've been running. Sure. Cutting. Doing your thing, squatting. right? Yeah. That's the main thing. I've been doing it all year, so I don't know where that came from. Okay. Now, in terms of, we talked to you during spring ball, and you added 20 pounds of muscle during the off season. Are you yeah. still at that same weight? Have you added weight? Where are you standing right now on that side of it? Yeah, right now I'm at like, I'm still around the same weight. I've dropped down a little bit, 222. Okay. But yeah, I'm getting up there. I mean, it just fluctuates day to day. 
was the whole thought just to be able to absorb more hits and just be able to deal with the ruggers of playing in the Big 12? Uh, I think it was just more just the, you know, I'm still growing and stuff, so mm -hmm. it was just the more feeling to my body and, you know, just get to be able to deliver more blows when people are coming down trying to hit me, you know, trying to make them really feel it and, you know, trying to, you know, wear them down. So when it comes later in the game, they're not really trying to, you know, come down in the head and stuff like that. Was your first year in the Big 12 everything you expected it to be? Um, yeah, it was a, it was really fun. Um, I, well, I expected to win a little bit more games, but sure. you know, like it was really fun. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was it was a blast for me. You know, like the environments that we played in, they were like surreal. So you know, it's it was like a dream come true. Now, looking at the season to come, when you guys compete here in the Big 12, obviously there's going to be a nine-game Big 12 season. There's also going to be the expectation that you guys are going to go out there and hopefully get to a bowl game this year. Is that the goal to get to six and six? What's the goal for the team right now? Our goal is to win as many games as possible, and it starts with week one. So we're just going to try to go one and zero every week. So right now, it's to go one and zero against uh, Northern Illinois, and that's our plan. Right. Now. Your experience here at BYU, what's it been like overall so far? Uh, it's been great, you know, just great people, good people, just talking to everyone. They've been really genuine and just been trying to help me out for my best. Looking at the video game that just came out, College Football 25, what was your thoughts on it? Like, capital J journalism here, like, what did you make of the new video game? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. You know, I thought my overall was going to be a little bit lower just because, you know, I, I wasn't sure what to expect. And, you know, I was just... I was just really happy to see my overall, and it was just like crazy just to see myself actually in the game, you know? Like, I remember uh, just like when they were doing the beta with the <laughs> big influencers, allowing them to play. Like, I was just looking up videos and trying to see if they were playing BYU, and I was just happy. Like, I would see myself run a little hitch rally, and I was just like, oh, dang. Like, this really me moving. Have you, have you always dreamed of being in that video game growing up? Um, yeah, I always dreamed of, of being in a video game, you know? Like, that's why. I, you know, playing Madden, you know, it's yeah. the road to glory and stuff like that. Like, build your own player. Like, I always did that and just hoping to try to become a player. So, yeah. Now, last thing for me is as you look at the season ahead, what are your personal goals? Like, what do you want to accomplish? I just want to win as many games as possible. That's my biggest goal. You know, just how my team win as much as possible. And that's all I can really ask for. There you have it, LJ Martin, and you heard him talk about it. He says, I'm not sure how those rumors got out, but uh, I'll tell you that he talked about his knee. That's not what I've heard about his injury. It's not a knee-related injury. So maybe he's hearing something different than I was hearing, but alas, I think the bigger point to be made here is that he is a guy that if you listen to what he was talking about, he's all about wanting to get wins. That's all that matters to him is having an improved season for BYU this fall. And I can respect that. I, I really appreciate guys who want to put their head down, just get to work and prove that last season, as I mentioned in the interview, is an aberration or an outlier. BYU doesn't want to be known as a losing program. Uh, it kind of struck a defiant tone last week with Kalani Sitake at points during some of his media sessions about him saying, no, I believe in this team. And I can appreciate the fact that he's stumping for his guys. But when you hear guys like LJ Martin also step up and say, no, we're our whole goal is to win games. We want to prove that we are a team that can be a force to be reckoned with in the Big 12. I can truly appreciate that about LJ's mindset, his teammates' mindset as they look forward to this upcoming season. They've got a lot to prove. There's just zero doubt about the fact that they have a lot of people who are doubting them, a lot of naysayers, a lot of people who think the BYU can't compete at the level that they are playing at now at the Power Four level. Well, this upcoming season, I think, will tell us a lot about the mindset of this team. Is it all uh, them trying to uh, hype themselves up and really psyching themselves out in the end? Or... Is it that quiet confidence that really will uh, yield the results that BYU and uh, Cougar fans are looking for? We're about to find out. But if you listen to LJ Martin, he is a guy that said, I just want to essentially do everything I can within my power to help this team win. And uh, you can tell he's really happy to also be in a video game as well. So big thank you once again to the Lost at Rivers Edge for having us down there. Big thank you to LJ Martin for sitting down for a couple of minutes amidst that uh, uh, in, uh, not event. Uh, I just want to invite an event together. But thank you to him for taking the time to chat with myself and uh, hopefully have more opportunities like this in the uh, days and months to come. And a really, really cool event, by the way, uh, to help him out uh, support a local community that he's working with and also help him get to know more Cougar fans as well. All right, we'll finish up today's show on the basketball front. Interesting tidbit coming out of one of the more well-known college basketball podcasts out there. Is A.J. DeBonsa Provo bound? Well, according to them, they think there's a good chance the Cougars could land the number one recruit in the 2025 recruiting cycle 
Why? We're talking about that next right here on Locked on Cougars. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. If you've not done so already, please sign up for our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. It's a great way to interact with the show, get updates from myself in the form of a text message, and that doesn't get much simpler than that. You want inside intel, you won't find anywhere else. Join us on the Locked On Cougars Insider Group. The link is in the show notes below. Whether you're watching and or listening to this, sign up today. You get a 14-day free trial, $5 a month afterwards, and hope you guys will all consider signing up right away. All right, let's finish up today's show talking about AJ DeBonson. Now, this is a young man. If you watch what, how he plays on the court, there's no doubt in my mind that he is going to be the top overall selection when he declares for the NBA draft. And that way, in theory, he'll be a one and done and then go to the NBA draft in 2025. The bigger point to be made, excuse me, 2026, I apologize. He's in the 2025 recruiting class, but in the 2026 NBA draft. Well, uh, the Ion College basketball podcast from CBS Sports has been around for quite some time. And they got some really really bright minds on it. Gary Parrish, uh, Matt Norlander among them. And they sat down and did a podcast yesterday that in that Gary Parrish said he was talking to somebody who evaluates top end talent. And it's talking about AJ DeBonsa in particular. And the quote was BYU is quote, the team to beat for DeBonsa. Everybody. You're going to get the top overall selection in the 2026 NBA draft, the top overall recruit in the 2025 college basketball recruiting cycle to go to sleepy old Provo, Utah to play basketball. Whoo, get ready. It's only going to get more nuts if AJ DeBonsa really does pick BYU. Now, his father said not too long ago, I think it was just this past weekend, that he plans on sitting down and getting a list of, of seven to ten uh, finalists that, that he will narrow in on. Then he plans to visit those schools, get a feel for each of them, and then ultimately make his decision uh, in the not-too-distant future. But, okay, Gary Parrish, I don't know how many of you know who Gary Parrish is. He's been working in the college basketball universe for seemingly forever. I, I feel like he's been doing it my entire life and I'm in my upper thirties, but even if it's not been that long, Gary Parrish is very well connected in the college basketball world. And if he has somebody out there saying that BYU is quote, the team to beat for AJ DeBonsa, that's incredible because that would be just another incredible recruiting coup for Kevin Young to pull off. It'd be, truly be the biggest to date. Getting Jaeger Denim is a big deal. Getting a cannon catching is a big deal in, of, in and of itself. Getting some of the transfers he's brought into this program, they're all big deals. You want to be the biggest deal in college basketball? Go and have a guy like AJ DeBonsa spurn the Dukes, the, uh, I don't know, just insert Blue Bloods, Kentuckys, Gonzagas. Have him spurn everybody and pick good old Brigham Young University to play his college basketball at and watch the collective hoop uh, world implode upon itself as they try to figure out what exactly is going on and what in the what is going on with Kevin Young. What's in the water in Provo? And why would AJ DeBonsa to pick BYU to play at? I cannot wait for it. I hope it's true. I, I, I fingers crossed, knock on wood, grab your lucky rabbit. So do whatever you got to do for good luck. I want nothing more than to see AJ DeBonsa calling BYU home for the ostensibly six months that he would uh, as a Cougar before going to the NBA draft. Those six months would be worth every single diamond penny anybody could throw uh, to get BYU basketball tickets. It would be an incredible show. And it's already going to be an incredible show this upcoming season, to be uh, quite clear. But Man, you want to push it to an even higher level? Watch what happens this year. And then if you add AJ DeBonsa to the mix the following year, man, the Kevin Young tenure could not have started uh, much hotter than it has. And it feels like it's only getting like more uh, like scorching hot as we go along here, as he continues to kind of collect all this recruit recruiting uh, hoopla and everything. It's just an incredible thing to consider, but a, a incredible clip uh, to hear that on the High on College Basketball podcast. I will link it in the show notes if you want to go and listen to it for yourself. It was around like the 50-minute mark of the podcast. Uh, by the way, big thank you to uh, Ethan for sending me the link and saying, Jake, have you heard this? And I I had not. I sat down and listened to the, the clip. It was about a five-minute uh, conversation there in particular involving BYU and AJ DeBonsa. But wow. What an incredible thing that would be, and only time will tell. But if Gary Parrish is saying that right now, BYU is the team to beat, that means that Kevin Young is doing something really right, and the DeBonsa family really likes what BYU is offering, at least is portraying at the current time. 
All right, that will do it for this edition of the podcast. Little Birdie told me that we're going to catch up with Connor Pay on tomorrow's podcast. Now, that could change, and if it does, I'll be sure to update you guys on social media. But I had a chat with Connor last night, and we agreed to sit down tonight and talk about his experience at Big 12 Media Days. Uh, he's been playing college football, 25 EA Sports uh, college football video game. Uh, he said all day. I've been playing quite a bit of it myself. We'll talk about that, and I may even fit some questions in from you, the listeners, as well. But if you want to ask those questions, join the Locked On Cougars Insider Group. It's one of the perks we have with our Insiders Group. They get first dibs on questions to any and all of our guests on the podcast so until tomorrow everybody thank you once again for making locked on cougars your first listen of the day thank you to all of you who make it uh, your first listen and also to thank you to all of you as i mentioned all the time for being everydayers as well and until tomorrow with connor pay this has been the locked on cougars podcast